Well, welcome to this tutorial, which is going to look briefly at the workflow for using uh, ZBrush and Houdini together. And to demonstrate this, I've got this object here, uh, which I prepared, uh, which is intended to be uh, a bit of a muddy terrain with a with a little island with a trench of mud around it. And I've modeled this already. But what I want to do is add a bit more detail to it uh, using displacement mapping and also to color it using ZBrush. And in order to make this process a little bit easier, I've taken the geometry, uh, the original geometry, and then I've created uh, some groups. And uh, this is rather useful in ZBrush because when we export this into the OBJ format, the OBJ format will continue to record these groups and you can then exploit them in ZBrush as we'll see in a minute. So I've uh, created various groups and some of them I'm creating by selecting here in the viewport and then using group geometry. Others, such as this one island bottom, I'm creating by using the combined mode on the group geometry node which allows me to create a group which is the same as the island group that's everything in the middle here and then subtract the group that I've created which is the top of the island this part so we're just left with the sides and uh, then we've got some sides over here and then we've got everything else and then I'm saving that geometry out as an OBJ file pond.obj so I'm going to pause the video now and open up ZBrush. So here we are in ZBrush. And the first thing I'm going to do is import that OBJ file that I exported a moment ago. And I'm going to lay it down on the canvas and I'm going to edit, enter edit mode. So this is our terrain that we're going to want to add some detailed displacements to and also some coloration. It's often easier to create UV mapping in ZBrush uh, than in Houdini. And it's perfectly possible to do that using the UV Master plugin here. Uh, I'm not going to go through that in detail uh, because there are tutorials on the ZBrush website about how to do it. But one of the advantages that uh, we had earlier of dividing our mesh into polygroups is that if you select this button here, UV Master can automatically divide the UV into islands based on the polygroups. So if I unwrap this, and I can unwrap the mesh directly because we're at the lowest subdivision level, and then flatten it, uh, we can see that it's created separate islands for separate pieces of geometry. Now in fact uh, what we may want to do is add more detail to the sides here of the trench which are going to have the most detailed displacements and coloration on them uh, and you can do that by control painting the density and for example what I can do is control paint four times normal density so these areas that are being painted now will end up being much bigger in UV terms uh, than the other areas so let me just paint this on and see how that affects things I can also paint a uh, smaller density so that uh, these areas will have less detail in the UV map. So let's just uh, leave it at that and unwrap it. And then we can flatten it to have a look. And we can see that now these sides pieces are, are much larger. Now it's important to remember uh, if you do create uh, UVs in ZBrush, uh, that you must export your OBJ again at the end of the process. 
and in a moment we're going to be using the Multimap Exporter plugin, which is also available from the ZBrush website, uh, which does that automatically for you. So what I'm going to do now is, in fact, pause this, the video and skip to a fully uh, completed model on which I've added uh, displacements and I've added coloration. So I've now added some displacements and some texturing to this model. And we must now export the maps and use them in Houdini. So let's use the Multimap Exporter plugin. And I'm going to export a displacement map, a normal map, the texture from the poly painting. I'm not going to bother with a cavity map. And I'm also going to export the mesh. And the reason I'm going to export the mesh is because uh, two things. I've obviously displaced it slightly because I've been using uh, Z tools to cut into this to this mesh, and also because I've created my UV coordinates here in ZBrush, so I'll need to export them back into Houdini. So let's have a look at the default options here for Multimap Exporter, and I've set my map size to 2048, and that's a pretty good size for most maps. And if we click export options here, we can see that we get a series of options for the different maps that we're going to create. And one of the important ones is to look here at the normal map. And for this to work in Houdini, you need to flip G and flip B. You have to have both of these enabled. Uh, you need to have tangent turned off and it's up to you whether you have adaptive and smooth UV uh, that is it produces a higher quality normal map but it's slower to produce another option to notice here which is enabled by default is flip V and this flips your UV map, the resulting maps, in the V direction, in, in other words, in the vertical direction. And in fact, you want this enabled for Houdini. So when you're satisfied uh, with all of this, uh, we click Create All Maps. And in this case, I've created a directory here called IMG for image. And you just save uh, anything with the, with the name pond.tiff is fine and it will create a series of files which have different names so all my maps have now been created which means I can come out of ZBrush but before I do that what I'm going to do is save the current tool put it here and that just ensures that I've got all this information stored in ZBrush format in case I need to save out the maps again so let's switch over to Houdini now and see how we can use those maps so we're back in Houdini and I'm going to turn off the display of our original mesh and then I'm just going to lay down a geometry node to bring in the new mesh and let's find that mesh and it's in the image directory and it's pond.obj and here's our new mesh and we can see that it has UV attributes and the groups are in fact also still preserved and in order to see the effect of our displacement and our coloration, we're going to need to create a material. And let me lay down a Mantra Surface Builder material. 
and select it. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the color map. And you'll see that the maps that are exported from ZBrush have these rather complicated names. And this rather confuses Houdini because it thinks some of the numbers present here are frame numbers. So you need to turn off show sequences as one entry. And what we've got here is pond dm, that's a displacement map, pond nm, that's a normal map, and pond tm, that's the texture map, that's the color. And by the way, notice these are absolutely huge TIFF files, and you may want to convert them into rat textures in advance so that you don't delay your renders, but we're going to just select this and hit, hit accept. And I'm also going to put this material onto here, and that's created the right coloration there. And let's have a look through our camera, and let's have a look at a render. And of course, uh, one of the things that I need to do is ensure that we're not we don't have any reflectivity. And there we can see we're picking up quite nicely the, the texture mapping that we had on our ZBrush object. And that seems to work pretty well. I might just uh, turn down the diffuse intensity a little bit. There we go. So the next thing is to handle the displacement map or the normal map. Now obviously you wouldn't want to use a displacement map and a normal map in the same material. So let's start by having a look at uh, the displacement map. And the displacement map is set up here in the displacement tab. And we can see that we have a displacement map option. I can enable the displacement map. And then I can read in pond dm and then this long string here. The number here in brackets gives you an indication of the scale of the displacement that you might want to use. So in this case it's uh, about 0 0.3. 0 0.5, let's leave it at 0.5. Now nothing seems to happen. This seems to be exactly the same image that we had before. And the reason for that is that unfortunately this complicated uh, file name here confuses Houdini. So you need to rename your displacement map to something a little bit more simple. Uh, so let's just do that. I'll rename it to just pond dm with all the rest of the numbers deleted. And then let's load it back in again, like so. And what we should now see is that we're getting a little bit of displacement here. We can increase this if we want, just to give ourselves a better sense of displacement. There we can see that we're clearly getting some displacement. You might be able to see this better if you use the standard renderer instead of the preview renderer because that will use micro polygon mode and it will give you a slightly higher quality result. So we're getting our displacements now. You've got a number of options uh, for the displacements. One of which is that obviously you can change the height of the displacements here. Uh, you can also decide whether to use bump mapping or true displacements. If you're using the ray tracing engine, or if you're using PBR, then it's probably better to avoid true displacements, because they're very expensive to calculate when you're not using the micropolygon engines or when you're using ray tracing. So let's just uh, do a render with that switched off. And we can see that the really quite hard to tell that we've not got true displacements here. Uh, the edges here you might just be able to tell. So 
do see if you really need true displacement. So let's now look at using the normal map instead of the displacement map. So let's turn off the displacement map here. And the normal map is brought in here on the bump tab. And we need to select the map type. So I'm going to select normal map. And then I'm going to use the normal map and I'm going to select our normal map here. Now remember I flipped the G and the B components of this. And it's looking reasonably good. We've got some issues over here. In fact, uh, these are looking a little bit odd. Let me just change our scene view and see whether that changes things. In fact, let me make sure I'm moving through my camera. Let's change the scene view and render again. And now we can see we've got some significant issues here and here. Well, what's going on? This is in fact a bug in the current version of the Mantra Surface shader. Uh, if we dive down inside this, uh, there is a node called Normal Convert, and this is the thing that's converting the normal map into normals that can be used in shading. We dive into this, and the problem is here on this constant offset node. This may be fixed in later versions of Houdini, uh, but the constant offset uh, has 0 0.5 in the first two components, but 0 in the third. Just a quick aside, what's going on here is that the normals are encoded as colors by using 0.5 equals 0. In other words, if a color has a value of 0.5, then it means the value of the normal in that direction is 0, red being the x direction, green being the y direction, and blue being the z direction. So if either of those, any of those has a value of 0.5, that means 0. If they have a value of 0, that means that there's a negative minus 1 value of the vector in that direction. If they have a value of 1, there's plus 1 value in that direction. You don't really need to know that. All you need to know is that this value here should be 0.5. Now, as I say, that may be fixed in later versions of Houdini. So... If you're not getting these problems, you don't need to make that change. Uh, but what that should mean, here we are, is that we are getting a proper render. Let's just render that. So to show this off in its final form, I've added another distant light and I've added some soft depth map shadows to the scene. So we can render this and this is what we get. So that's how to use ZBrush textures, normal and displacement maps in Houdini. And just to recap, for all of the maps you need to have Flip V enabled. And for normal maps, you need to flip the G and B components of the map. In other words, the Y and Z components of your normal. And if you do that, you can use the maps pretty much straight away in Houdini, providing you rename the displacement map and providing if that bug is still present in the matter surface shader, you correct it. I hope this has been useful.